spring break of my freshman year of college, I went back home to my parents' house in suburbia because, well, I know how to party. Yeah. I spent my days sleeping in and doing the month's worth of laundry that I brought home with me, walking through the halls of my high school with my friends who hadn't yet graduated. All right, all right, all right. I slid right back into the familiar patterns I know my whole life. Everything felt so comfortable and easy. Halfway through the week, my parents took me aside and said, you're an adult now. We're not driving you to school. You need to figure out how to get back. I said, oh shizzle. <laughs> because when you've lived 18 years in the suburbs, six months in a college town, and listened to a lot of hip hop, you know how the world works. <laughs> I didn't think about it again until the last minute, at which point I discovered that public transportation doesn't really do small towns in upstate New York. So I was scrambling, looking for phone numbers and bus schedules, cursing at my parents' shrieking modem for being so slow, you know. I finally settled on taking a train to New York City and a bus the rest of the way. Sounded easy, but I was terrified because this plan involved me going through New York City by myself, alone, just me. And I was born in the suburbs. Everyone I knew was from the suburbs. I didn't even know people who aspired to live in a city. <laughs> the prospect of me alone in New York City was so far out there beyond anything I had ever experienced, I couldn't even fathom it. I did know that real cities have three necessary components. Skyscrapers, museums, and those terrifying punks from the Howard the Duck movie. <laughs> and New York would have all three in abundance. Sunday, my parents, yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Sunday, my parents dropped me off at the train station with my massive load of, with my massive bag of clean clothes. <laughs> and gave me five crisp $20 bills for bus fare and to say, we're proud of you for doing this on your own. When the train got to Penn Station, I got off and slowly made my way through those dirty, dark, gray corridors. Adrenaline made me want to break into a sprint, but the bag was so heavy, I could barely move. I started mumbling to myself, I'm gonna get eaten alive. I'm gonna get mugged. I'm gonna die. When I made it outside, it was a gorgeous spring day. The sun was shining, uh, glimmering off the skyscrapers. The sky was blue. I took a deep breath and started to relax as I realized I can do this because I'm a city person. It was seven blocks to the bus terminal, so I did what city people do. I looked for a cab. <laughs> Around the corner was a taxi kiosk, and as I inched my way over there, slowly, someone said, hey, got you a cab here. I turned to see a guy who looked exactly like Snoop Dogg, and he had, he looked like a cab, he looked like a cab, he looked like a cab, he looked like a cab. He had Canadian tux on and a labor slightly drawn. Should I trust him? Pro, jeans, denim jackets, and Snoop Dogg, three of my favorite things ever. Uh, Come on, Snoop is from Long Beach, might not be him. <laughs> it's possible. Pro, waiting at a kiosk is for tourists. A city person has a guy to hail cabs. Pro, this guy was laid back. And do you know what his mind was on? In, any guesses out there in the audience? His money. And do you know what his money was on? Here go. Snoop. I said, oh shizzle. Snoop picked up my suitcase and threw it in the trunk, turned to me, said, that'll be $10. It's kind of pricey, but New York City prices, right? I pulled in my wallet, grabbed a $20 bill, and said, can you make change? Snoop said, oh shizzle, bo bizzle. And not missing a beat, 
reached into my wallet, grabbed the other four 20s, and never in my life, before or since, have I seen a guy in a leg brace bolt off like that. <laughs> I looked down at my suitcase, I looked at his figure, quickly receding on the horizon, back in my suitcase, I got in the cab. The driver immediately said, you don't never give money to nobody like that, which would have been amazing advice had it come 30 seconds earlier. <laughs> the bus terminal was even grimier than Penn Station. As I opened the door, a flock of pigeons that lived inside went scattering in every direction. I felt stupid and violated and embarrassed and angry because I had failed at being a city person. Um, and after paying for bus fare, it would be months before I could afford a single cup of ramen noodles. And the prospect of ever experiencing something out there, beyond what I already knew, was suddenly terrifying. Then I realized, holy shit, I just got robbed by Snoop. <laughs> Do you know who would have a story about getting robbed by Snoop? A city person. Yeah. Go shizzle, bo bizzle. <laughs>